Hello, welcome to this lesson on projectiles. A projectile is basically something that is thrown. So if you throw a ball, it becomes a projectile. There are three parts to the lesson. Each one is a separate video. This is part one, a basic introduction, and we're going to look at horizontal projectiles. That means ones that start off moving in a horizontal direction. Part two will be about problem solving. That means calculations to do with horizontal projectiles. And part three will be about non-horizontal projectiles, ones that start off at any angle. For example, the one in the diagram. You may find it handy to have a pen and paper and a calculator to hand to try the questions as we work through the lesson. In part one, we're going to talk about first the background information that you should already know. There are a number of things you need to know about to be able to deal with projectiles and we're going to do a quick review of what you should already know. Then we'll talk about basic projectiles and horizontal projectiles. And at the end of the lesson, a short quiz to check whether you've learned what you needed to. Let's start with what you should already know. Here's a question. There's a one kilogram mass and a five kilogram mass. The bottoms are at the same level and we're going to drop them at the same time. And the question is, which hits the ground first? And you ignore the effects of air resistance. If you want to think about that, pause the video. I'll tell you the answer in a moment. Well, as I hope you know, the answer is that they hit the ground together. They will fall, keeping together, and strike the ground together. That's a result of the fact that they have the same acceleration downwards. That's the acceleration due to gravity g, which is about 9.81 meters per second squared. So you should already know that a falling object has acceleration g, g is called acceleration due to gravity. It can be called gravitational field strength or acceleration of free fall. Its value is 9.81 meters per second squared. It can be given in a different unit, 9.81 newtons per kilogram. If using g in calculations, you've got to be careful. If you're using positive to mean upwards, then g in the equations must be given a value of minus 9.81 meters per second squared because it acts downwards. So this is information that I expect you already know. What else should you already know? We should be familiar with using the SUVAT equations, the equations of uniform acceleration. There they are. They're covered in separate lessons. Of course, if you use SUVAT equations, you must choose a sign convention and use it consistently. We often use positive up, negative down, but we don't have to have it that way around. When we use the SUVAT equations, if we're talking about the acceleration due to gravity, we can replace A by G. And we get the equations shown on the right hand side. What else should you know? Well, the mathematical bit, apart from SUVAT equations, is you need to know how to resolve vectors into components. And you need to know how to add components to get a vector. Let's go over these briefly. There's vector v, could be a velocity at an angle theta to the horizontal. And here's a question for you. Can you give expressions for the horizontal and the vertical components? It's a formula in terms of v and sine th theta and cos theta. Pause the video, see if you can do that. Well, I hope you remember how to do it. You get the components by looking at the sides of the rectangle, where the vector is a diagonal. The vertical component will be v sine theta. The horizontal component will be v cos theta. These are covered in a separate lesson. So if you're not familiar with how to resolve a vector, you need to make sure you can do it, or you won't be able to do the calculations later on. 
What else? Well, the final thing is you need to know how to reverse the resolving a vector. You need to know how to find a vector by adding its components. So here's an exercise for you. Can you find the velocity, speed and direction, given the components? And the components are horizontally 7 meters a second, vertically 4 meters a second downwards. Pause the video, see if you can do that. Well, I hope you remember how to add two components construct the rectangle we're trying to find the diagonal which is the the full vector you can use Pythagoras to get the magnitude of the vector square root of those two components uh, squared and added together to get the angle theta the tangent of theta will be the opposite over the adjacent side In this case it's 4 over 7 that gives theta is 10 minus 1 4 over 7 so if you want to pause the video and read the detail of that, you can, but later on you'll find you need to be able to do this to solve some of the calculations. Right, that covers what you should already know as background information. Let's talk about projectiles. What is it? Well, the first thing to note is a projectile is a project which is given some initial velocity. Maybe you throw it or it's fired out of a gun and then it's in a state of free fall with only its weight, only gravity acting on it. And we usually ignore the effects of air resistance, at least for simple calculations. So consider a projectile as something that's got some velocity initially, and then once it's in the air, it's just in the, under the influence of gravity. Examples are a ball, stone if you throw one, a bullet after it leaves a gun or shell from a cannon, an object dropped from a moving vehicle will be a projectile. A horizontal projectile which is what we're going to talk about is one with an initial velocity which is horizontal and we'll give an example of that in a moment. So here's an important question for you to think about. A bullet is fired horizontally. Its trajectory, which means its path, is shown in red. That's the diagram below. That's the trajectory of the bullet. And at the same moment as the bullet leaves the gun, a ball is dropped from the same height. Now that's shown on the diagram. Yellow ball is dropped at the moment the bullet leaves the gun. And the question for you to think about is this, which reaches the ground first, the ball or the bullet? And we ignore the effects of air resistance. So if you want to think about that, pause the video. And the answer is they reach the ground together. Intuition says the, the ball should reach the ground first, but that's wrong. Just because the bullet has moved a long way doesn't mean it's been in the air longer. Let's analyze that and make sure we understand what happens. Here's a better diagram. There's a ball being released, there's a bullet leaving the gun. If we could watch these, they would fall together so that they are at the same height and then they reach the same, they reach the ground at the same time. Both objects are in free fall that means they're just under the influence of gravity. The weight is the only force on them. So both have the same acceleration, which is g acting downwards. Wherever the bullet is, it's only got its weight pulling it down. I've marked it at different positions. There is no force horizontally. Once it's left the gun, it's not being pushed by any horizontal force. It's just moving with its own momentum to the right. But it's also being pulled downwards while it's moving at a steady speed to the right. The only force on it while it's in the air, if we ignore air resistance, is the weight continually pulling it downwards and it will accelerate it. It will increase the vertical component of the bullet's velocity in the same way as the vertical velocity of the ball increases as it falls. We're going to look at this in more detail. So, suppose the bullet leaves the gun and it's got a 
horizontal velocity that's represented by the green arrow now once it's left the gun the bullet has no force on it apart from its weight so in a horizontal direction there is no force there's no force making it move left or right trying to make it accelerate to the left or the right so that horizontal velocity stays the same as long as the bullet is falling down it's got the same horizontal velocity because there is no horizontal force acting on it however you can't say the same about the vertical component of its velocity when it leaves the gun there's no vertical component the same as the ball the instant you release the ball it's going to start accelerating but at that very instant it's released it's got no vertical velocity and as the bullet comes out of the gun it's got no vertical velocity of course as the bullet falls down like the ball it picks up some vertical component of velocity shown by the blue arrow and a bit later the vertical component is bigger it's accelerating getting faster and faster as it goes downwards being pulled down being accelerated by its weight can you see what's happening very important the horizontal velocity the component is fixed but the vertical component is increasing because it's falling under the influence of gravity like the ball there is only a vertical force on the bullet the vertical acceleration is not affected by the sideways motion that's why it falls at the same rate as the ball what about the total velocity well look at the point here the total velocity is the vector sum of those components so the total velocity will be this white arrow direction is a tangent to the trajectory what about a bit later well the new velocity will be the vector sum of these components the new white arrow at a different direction can you see why the direction is changing the vertical component is growing the horizontal component is fixed the resultant gets bigger and points downwards more steeply as time goes on that's a very important diagram to understand pause the video and just make sure you are happy with it so what are the key points well here's the first one about the horizontal projectile it has the same height and vertical component of velocity as an object dropped at the same time from the same height that's what we've just been looking at there's the diagram as it falls the bullet and the ball will be at the same height after the same time and their velocities the vertical velocities will be the same if the ball has got a vertical velocity of one meter per second downwards here the bullet will have a vertical component of velocity one meter per second downwards the horizontal component <coughs> excuse me of velocity is constant it isn't affected by the vertical motion and as there is no force horizontally that horizontal component of velocity stays the same it's Newton's first law in the horizontal direction and the overall velocity at any moment is just a vector sum of the horizontal and vertical components that's what we looked at those are very important points if you don't understand understand these you won't be able to understand projectiles okay now let's see what you've picked up here's a, a quiz here's a problem a stone is thrown horizontally at five meters per second from the edge of a building and the stone lands on the ground three seconds later you can ignore our resistance there's a diagram top of the building ground the initial velocity is five meters per second it's moving initially horizontally here are your questions pause the video work through them decide if they are true or false and I'll go through the answers in a moment well I hope you've tried them let's go through them a the stone accelerates horizontally for three seconds no it doesn't the horizontal velocity is constant 
it's, it's actually 5 metres a second there's no force horizontally once this object is in the air so we can say that is false B the stone accelerates vertically for 3 seconds yes it does the vertical acceleration is caused by its weight it's, it's G acceleration due to gravity this is true the stone's initial vertical velocity is 5 meters per second. No, that's the initial horizontal velocity. In fact, the initial vertical velocity is zero. False. When the stone hits the ground, its speed is 5 meters per second. Well, no, it'll be faster than 5 meters per second. The horizontal component will be 5, and there'll be a vertical component, component to add with vector addition. The resultant will be bigger than 5, so we can say that is false. The stone lands 15 meters from the building. Yes, it does. Its horizontal speed is fixed at 5 meters per second. It's in the air for 3 seconds, so it's moved f at 5 meters per second for 3 seconds. It's 15 meters. It's true. And the bottom one, F. Well, if you look at this equation, you could use this to find the distance fallen by an object released from the same height. If we take downwards as positive, G is 9.8. And S is a downwards displacement. Positive value. And that would be the formula for a stone released at the same moment as the one that was thrown. It would fall downwards, initial vertical component of velocity is zero, and it's half gt squared. That is true. We'll be using that more in part two, so if you didn't get it, don't worry, we'll be going over it in part two. And that's it for this introductory part of the lesson. When we go through part two, we'll be looking at how to do calculations involving horizontal projectiles. Thank you for watching.